Creating fabs. In this video, we will describe how to create a fab. We will show how to use uh, different commands as the W block and cubing command and what is needed in your fabs. Please take a note like in this video, we will only cover what it's for break shapes. If you want to know how to create a fab for a sun shape bracket or a steel fab, make sure to see those videos in order to understand the logic on creating fabs. Starting for each single piece, it is important to create a extrusion for that part. We use the W block command that it can any part be easily modeled by extruding a 2D shape and to a 3D part. It is important to understand that the name of the fab and the dies we will name it as the part number and DWG. We will see an example in a couple of minutes more. For other parts, make a 3D model of the part and save it into the fab dies folder, name it under part number and fab DWG, where the fab is the fab number for you set above. All those dies needs to be saved into the project folder takeoff fab dies. Let's see an example in our process. From our detailed file 3, you will notice like we are going to need a splice leaf. It's called with the thickness and the finish and how long is that part and it's draw there. So the first thing just uh, to make sure, I need to go to my detail file three and then go to copy this. And remember from our previous video that we are saving all layers or, or previous details on our panel group. Break shape shop use, and I will save it here. I call it as SPL or splice leaf. Now I can open this in AutoCAD and see my part. The first thing I notice is I have an entire block. So in case I want to create a new break shape under the detail, I need to make some adjustment. For example, as you can see here at the bottom, this part is hitting with the extrusion. So one important thing is maybe some adjustment, like for example, 1 16th from that point here. So if I click 1 16th, and I can do the same from this point here, 1 16th. We don't have any specific rule in this. It's only to avoid hitting with the, the part. And now I can use a command to create a break shape under WW drafting. If you go to break shapes and it will ask me the materials. I wanna use aluminum, going back to my detail and the thickness is 0 0.040. So if I call it zero or zero, then hit enter. And then I can draw a line where I need my parts. In this case, this is the beginning. Uh, I'll probably need another one here. So I just cancel. I'm going to go back from here to here to here. There you go. So I can create again, break shit, 0, 0.0 aluminum. So now I know like I need from here to here and to here Then hit enter. And it will ask me what is the inside of the break shape. So I pay a place inside of this and there you go. So I have now a polyline for my break shape. I can copy this one here, just the polyline here. And move it a little bit here. I can change the color, this condition. So wherever I consider it is more visible. And I will rotate this 
90 degree just to have a clear picture. When I'm extruding a part, it's very important to understand that the view from YZ, YX, it's referencing how I'm gonna extrude the part. So I'll show you in a couple minutes more. So remember the W block, w block command here, click here, select the object. I select the splice leaf and hit enter. Now it's gonna ask me if I want to uh, retain or delete. If I hit delete, this is going to be deleted. So I'm gonna click only retain for further um, future reference. And now it's gonna ask me where is to save that detail. So remember, we are always saving under the project folder, go to the project folder, Drafting, Maps. I'm sorry, go back to, I'm sorry, Drafting, Takeoff, Fabs, and Die. And this is where I'm going to call my splice leaf. In this case, the naming convention is SPL because it's in a splice leaf, and I'm going to use this digits for the SRT because I'm this is splicing is for this SRT. So the naming it's SPL-6104. Going back to my cat here, call it SPL-6104. And hit save. Okay. And there you go. I have my part created. Now it is important to use the QB command in AutoCAD to extrude the part or create a 3D model for the part. Uh, on the take a property table, we select the fab to edit or to add the notches and then without all the dimensions information required into the fab. So going back to my cat detail, I'm going back here. So I have my die. Remember that I need to create now a part use. In this time, so I'm going to be call it PSPL for splice lead. And I'm going to use the same naming convention. I yes, already did it, 61. And what was the name? 6104. So this is for practice from our previous video. So you will notice like we are going to using a fab number one and it's a fixed length. It's two inches long. If we go back to the detail, it says uh, two inches long painted black. So I need to incorporate that data paint black and hit refresh. There you go. So I will use that. And again, just to practice, remember how to create a tag line, I'm going to take off metal tag, call it SPL. And those splice leaf are happening here. So I finish, I hit this one here. I continue adding the, the data, BS-01 and distribution number one. And I change the color for a magenta. If I UPD this, because it's a new part, as we discussed in the previous video, you will notice like it's asked me for MM and I don't want to use that one. So I click no. And I click the new prefix required, SPL. Okay. And is this not a standard? It's okay. Yes. And there you go. If I go to LMM, I have now my mark number. And from the previous video, I can move it and adjustment where I need it. But remember to change to tag number five. And then I go to LMM two. And there you go. Because this is happening in different location, I can do the same as we already did it in the previous video. And there you go. Do the same here, LMM, going here to make more visible and gradable when I need to create my PDF. Okay, so at this point I have all what I need now remember the new command that we need to incorporate is the QB command. What it's gonna do, if I type QB command, as you can see, and click 
on the tag and hit enter, it will create a beam or an extrusion. There you go. So I have my previous die and now it is extruded two inches long into the takeoff program. So I have my fab. If I click on the right side here and open fab template, I can see my fab here. And this is what I was talking about, the orientation. Uh, because I want to see always the good side on the right side, it is important to orientate my die in this condition. For example, if you are pointing from the right side, X and Y, I uh, will notice like I have my pointing from the top to the left. So that's going to be the rule following here. So it could be this way, or I can change this to the other way. And the die, it will change later when I was creating this to the bottom of this part. But in this case, I consider this is good the way that I have it. So I'm going back here and just going back where I was previously. Okay, so I have no my fab. What else do I need to do? Well, there is uh, some information needed in your fab. For example, we need completed dimensions. We're going to need the good sides. We're going to need the thickness and material. Uh, if it's any notch size or any hole place in dimension, we need to the, provide that from the edges. We're going to need the diameter hard hole node. And this is very important. You can use the Walters and Wolf standard shop drill and punch size fastener to verify what is the whole uh, diameter we're using. In case you're using a contrasting hole or a note, uh, remember to include the direction of the contrasting drill with an arrow and add the fastener description and type. It's very important as a note that if you have a brake ship and uh, that will be, will be fabricated by outside vendor, only use decimal unit to specify the diameter of the hard hole and the contrasting hole. So let's go back to our fab here. So as we previously discussed, we are going to need, um, I'm going to try to follow what's here on my presentation. So complete dimensions and good size. Let's gonna concentrate on those two first. I have my good size. So I need to incorporate the dimensions here. Uh, I need to create, for example, from here, a good dimension from here to here. There you go. And a good dimension from here to here. And there you go. So I have good dimensions. I don't need to incorporate the angle because uh, if it's not, in, incorporate there, uh, you can understand it's 90 degree. Unless it's less different than 90 degree, then I need to incorporate the angle. But I can incorporate the thickness and the material. And that's as simple as adding a text node here on this portion here, saying the material of the thickness of this material. The thickness, I can call it zero and the material. There you go. Aluminum thickness. Maybe I can scale a little bit more just for the proportion. Mm. I have now the thickness, the material for this particular part. Because uh, this is a painted part, it is important uh, the following that we are going to show. For example, if it's a painted part, we need to show a hidden line for finished surface and note, and we need to incorporate a painted surface. For example, if the profile is attached to a screw board, then we need to add a note like match to fit and the profile picture, like for example, in this case. So as you can see, we have a finish on the face, the dimensions, the countersink drill direction, and the entire description for the part and any notches required. At the same as I have uh, the diameter or instruction for the countersink hole and uh, the thickness of the material and the material by itself. And this is a specific note for caps when we're working on it. So how do we do that? Let's get started and see uh, how do we do it on our cap or um, our splice leaf. 
So I have that material and adding a node only is not only like having a rectangle here and change that for um, the repetitive or miscellaneous and change for a heating. So I wanna only show like my splice leaf, it's painted, it could be painted everywhere, but at my biggest concern, it's the exterior face of this condition. So then I need to be pointing only where I want to incorporate that uh, finish line. So if it's this here, if it's here, maybe I can explode that one. There you go. So I can just just a little bit this here in order to be clear. There you go. I can show the arrows only pointing this direction. And same story here, I can do a tiny fixed end. So this is more for a drafting and um, we need to use or good judgment to understand what is there what we're doing but uh, as soon as i have that arrow then again i can add that little note here saying uh, finish this surface i can adjust a little bit the text here and there you go. So I have now the finished lines. I have the thickness, I have the dimension, and basically this fab, it's complete. Uh, if you are interested in see how to create a notch or how do we add a hole, uh, we will discuss that in the Sunshine Bracket video and the Steel Bar video. But for now, this is uh, what we really need for creating a break shape, basic break shape. And um, so that's it. This covered this video and uh, we will talk about how to create a sunshade fab and steel bar.